What's up, do life in a body you love? We're going to jump into metabolism today and we're going to go kind of deep. So I get asked this often um, and I feel like it's just time to kind of like really nerd out about this a little bit deeper than we normally do. Um, don't shoot the messenger. You're not going to like some of the things that you hear. But the question that I get all the time is, how fast can I lose weight? And we have to kind of reframe that question right from the beginning, because the answer to that, of course, is like, you can lose a lot of weight really fast. There's lots of ways to do that. But I know when people ask me that, what they're meaning, because my focus is on sustainable weight loss so that you can keep your results, right? And so I know what you really mean when you ask me that is, how fast can I lose weight without doing damage to my metabolism and in a way where I can keep it off? Or people will ask me like, how fast can I safely lose weight? And it's not that losing weight rapidly is somehow dangerous. There can actually be some things that happen, but by and large, it's it's not an issue, okay? The real issue is how fast can I go and still keep the results, right? That's what we all wanna know. Uh, hello, myself included, like when it's time for me to get a little bit leaner or whatever, I, I wanna hurry up and get there as fast as I possibly can, I don't know if, you know, you don't know me very well, like you haven't been in my space for a very long time, or you don't have like any uh, interaction with me, like in the real world, uh, grass don't grow under these feet. Okay. If I say I want to do something, boom, we're doing it. We're making it happen. Let's go now. And I am aggressive. I very much have a masculine energy. And so I don't want things to go any slower than they have to either. And when I'm working with my clients, I don't want to like on purpose make their weight loss slow. Why would I want to do that? I want happy clients. Um, every coach wants like positive like experiences within their program and for people to like say good things about their program. And like, this is very much a word of mouth business, but I also just cannot with integrity do things that I know are setting women up to regain the weight. And so this episode is going to be for you if you have ever lost weight and then regained it. Okay, so that's one issue. Maybe you've even lost weight and you've regained it plus some. Like the rebound weight gain is usually more than the amount lost in the first place. This is true for many, many, many people, okay? So if you're in that boat, I don't want you to feel like you've done something wrong or your metabolism is just broken now and there's no way to fix it. That's not true. Nobody has a broken metabolism. Nothing is ever beyond repair. There's always things that we can do, okay? But if you have experienced rebound weight gain, uh, you're in good company. You're 95% of dieters. 95% of people who lose weight on a diet regain it. What the what? Why? And we think it's because we lack discipline or we lack willpower. Now, is that sometimes what happened? Yeah, because old habits die hard, right? So maintenance is really about two things, okay? It's about a mindset. There is a specific mindset to maintenance. It is habit work. It is a lot of shifting our thinking because we have to like get rid of all these diet rules that are in our head and all of this other mumbo jumbo. And I'm not going to get into the mindset part today. The other part of maintenance is having a healthy metabolism. If you slow your metabolism so much for the sake of losing weight that you have to live off of lettuce, how long are you going to keep that? And there are actually things at play when you lose weight that are making your body primed to regain it. And we're going to talk about those things today. So this is for you if you've rebound weight gain, but this episode is also for you if you never even get to the goal weight. If you have 50 pounds to lose, let's say, and you can only ever lose 20, and then it comes to a grinding halt and you're like, I can only lose X amount of weight, or I can get the scale to 195 but I cannot ever get it one pound lower than that. It doesn't matter what I do. Like it doesn't matter how much I eat or how little I eat or how much I work out or what the scale doesn't move beyond that weight. It's like my body literally won't move down past this one number on the scale. It hasn't done it in years. And here's what I'm going to tell you. Even if that's you, you can get your body below that number. You can, but you can't do it with the old methods. It's impossible. If you've experienced this, then it's time for a different approach. Okay, so we have to understand how fast we can lose fat, though, 
We have to understand what is happening to our body when we're losing fat so that you can understand how fast your body is going to lose it. And the answer is it varies person to person. So some people can lose weight really, really fast, really, really quick. And it doesn't seem to have much of an effect on their metabolism. We just don't like those people. (laughs) I'm just kidding. If you are a fast burner, God love you. So is my husband and it makes me crazy, but it also makes me really happy for him. Uh, But it makes me really sad for me because I don't have his metabolism, but there is diet history. Okay. So it's, what have we already done to our body? There's genetics. Like some people are just, they have a faster metabolism. Some people have a slower one. That is what it is. And I don't understand why people act like that's not true. It's absolutely true. And we're not doing anybody any favors by acting like it's not and shaming people and acting like, well, if you just buckle down and eat what you're supposed to eat, the weight loss will be really easy for you. Like, no, like it's harder for some people. It's easier for some people. And some people can diet pretty hard and it doesn't slow them down. And some people can't. But across the board, I mean, if you're here and you're listening to an episode titled, How Quickly Can I Lose Fat?, I'm going to assume it's either not that easy for you or it's pretty easy, but then you rebound weight gain. Okay, so mindset things aside, even if you continued to do the same things that led to fat loss, your body would still want you to regain the weight. And so we have to outsmart our metabolism, essentially, okay? And now the things I'm gonna talk about, they're true for all people, okay? These things affect teenagers, they affect men, they affect younger women. It's just that men tend to be a little bit faster burners than women are anyways, and younger women tend to be a little bit faster than older women. And so while the things we're going to talk about are true for all people, if you're a woman who is above 35, we'll say, but it could really be any variety of ages, and you feel like your metabolism is slowing down, it's that you now have to pay attention to this. That's what changed. It's not that this isn't true for all people, okay? So if you're under 35 and you're listening to this, heed my warning, young lady, and start paying attention to this now, okay? But if you're already slowing down, you can't continue to ignore the science, okay? So I know there are a lot of people out there who are putting people on like super low calorie diets because it gets them really fast results. And we all want that, I know. But you have to put your horse blinders on and you have to stay in your lane and you have to not do that. And then I know there are other people who are like, no, you just need to eat a bunch more food because that worked for them and their metabolism. And so they're like, this is the way. And there is a time and a place for that. It's called reverse dieting and it can work, but you have to know how to do it. And it's not like, that's not what every single person needs. And so everybody's got their soapbox. Everybody's preaching something from the mountaintop. We just got to look at the science. How about we do that? Like, we have evidence to support all the things that I'm about to share with you. Uh, Here's why nobody talks about it. I'm going to take a guess and say, because it's not fun. It's not what we want to hear. And it doesn't sell weight loss supplements or programs very well at all, (laughs) because you're not going to want to hear this. Um, But okay, so here's the deal. How much fat you can lose without slowing down your metabolism largely depends on how much fat you have on your body versus how much muscle you have on your body, okay? That's one factor. The leaner you are, the less fat you can lose without dipping into your muscle. So the more adiposity that you have, the more fat mass that is on your body, the more of it you can lose quicker without dipping into your muscle and without pushing metabolic adaptation and without wonking out your hormones, although that third one, we'll get into that more in just a second. But we had to kind of like break these all down into different pieces. Uh, And then it's also genetics, partially. Okay, so there's a rule. I hate this rule. Don't bust out your calculator and start doing this math equation on yourself because I'm gonna tell you why the rule doesn't work the way you think it would, okay? But there's a 1% rule that says if you go above losing 1% of your body weight per week, you are for sure dipping into a lot of muscle. And so you don't ever really want to go above that 1%. Now that part is true, but here's the caveat to that. The slower you're going, the less metabolic adaptation you're going to experience, the less dip 
into your muscles you're going to experience and the less fluctuations in your hormones you're going to experience. And I'm going to explain all those in just a second. So 0.4% would be more ideal, but is it more ideal if it's so slow that it makes you crazy and then you quit? So it's always this like back and forth between like biologically what is going to be best for you and then psychologically what is going to work for you. And then there's just the reality that 1% is too high for some people. It just is. And as you lose weight, you're going to need, depending on how lean you want to get, you're going to need breaks. You're going to need maintenance breaks to buffer your metabolism. We'll talk about that more. Uh, and the less you weigh, because you've been losing weight, that number changes. 1% gets smaller, right? So when people hear that rule, they're like, oh, great. I can lose 1% of what I weigh today every single week until I hit my goal. So if I weigh 250 pounds, 1% is two and a half pounds per week. Cool. I can lose two and a half pounds a week until I've lost hundred pounds and I weigh 150 pounds. And it's like, that's not actually how it's going to play out. The math don't math because your body is going to dig in its heels and that ain't how it's going to work. Plus, once you lose 50 pounds, so you're 200 pounds, 1% is no longer two and a half pounds. It's now two pounds, right? So for multiple reasons, that math equation doesn't actually work. But pie in the sky, that would be like, if you, if you had a, like a magical wand and you could make that 1% actually work, that's as fast as you would possibly ever want to go, ever. Now, here's the caveat to that. You just get started and you eat total trash like Nikki Noodle did. Hey, where are my trash eating girls? I love me some filet fish sandwich from McDonald's. Love me some Pop-Tarts. I still eat that stuff once in a while, you guys. Um, there is no bad or trashy food, but to illustrate my point, like, let's say you just eat like a toddler with no parents. So you just run around eating all the things and you go on a pretty clean diet. You're immediately going to lose a bunch of weight. It's mostly water and a little bit of fat, right? But it's not all fat loss and it's not bad. So we just had a woman who lost eight pounds in our five day challenge. And I'm in this challenge talking about how you don't want to lose weight so fast, right? And then people lose a bunch of weight in this challenge. And they're like, oh my God, I'm losing too much weight. And I'm like, no, 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 you're fine. You're just like shifting water. Make sure you stay hydrated. It's not a big deal. But we don't want to be going that fast all the time because a few different things are going to happen. So we talked about in the challenge, if you were in that, we talked about metabolic adaptation. We talked about muscle loss. I didn't dive into the hormone piece very well, just for time's sake. And so I want to talk about that piece right now. And then I want to illustrate the other two again, because it bears repeating. You guys, we have to hear this stuff over and over and over. So even if this is a review, listen up ladies. Okay. When you lose weight, correction, when you lose fat and your fat cells shrink, your ghrelin and your leptin and all these hormonal things start changing. That is like your hunger and your satiety. And there are all these hormones that tell your brain, Hey, stop eating. I'm full. Or, Hey, I'm hungry. All of that. So remember your body doesn't really want you to lose weight. It doesn't like it wants you to store energy because we didn't, I almost said we didn't grow up. We didn't grow up with all this abundance of food. Okay. No, you and I did, but humanity as a whole didn't always have an abundance of food. So your body does its best to keep things. Okay, this is where this whole idea of like a set point comes from. That's a whole nother topic. No, your set point doesn't have to keep you stuck. You can basically change it, but neither here nor there. Um, your body wants to keep you a little bit bigger because it's safer. It doesn't want you to starve. So your fat cells shrink, your hormones start shifting in a way that makes you hungry, have cravings, not feel satisfied with your meals. Have you ever experienced this where you're dieting, you're doing fine, and then all of a sudden you're like, I'm ravenous. I haven't changed anything, but I'm so hungry. I'm so grumpy. I like one of those Snickers commercials. I don't even know what's going on. 
what's happening is your hormones are shifting. So when we talk about like wrecking your hormones from dieting, I'm not necessarily talking about your sex hormones, your estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. Although if you get lean enough or you cut calories enough, you can also jack those up. And if you have thyroid issues and your carbs are way too low, you can start changing those numbers too. So that can happen, but what's more likely to happen for like across the board, this happens to everybody is this hormonal shift. Okay. So now your body is like primed, ready to go feed me. I want to eat all the things. It's going to be really difficult to override that. If you continue to try to eat extremely low calorie or extremely low carb or extremely low protein or whatever the thing is that you're doing. And so when you get to your goal weight, if you get to your goal weight, you're going to be ravenous. So that is one thing that happens. And it tends to be that the slower you go, the less of that you experience. So there's that. Then there's actual metabolic adaptation, which is a separate process but it's also, it's a slowing of your metabolism. Okay. So the hormonal shifts, it's not necessarily slowing your metabolism. It's just making it really, really, really difficult for you to continue to adhere to your diet. So now we have metabolic adaptation where your body's getting very frugal with the energy coming in. It's getting smart with it because again, your body thinks, oh, holy cow, we don't have a lot of food coming in what are we going to do? I guess we need to conserve. So is it a starvation mode? I mean, no, sort of playing with semantics. There's a whole episode about that. You can go listen to it if you want to. <clears throat> but the reality is, yeah, your metabolism does absolutely slow down. We know that this happens. And to a certain degree, it's going to happen even with healthy weight loss. It's not entirely bad. So if you experience a kind of normal amount of metabolic adaptation, like your body shrank a lot and now you need less calories. That's totally fine. Like you need less calories to live when you weigh 200 pounds than you do when you live, live, we're at 300 pounds. Okay. That's just normal if you're eating a normal amount of food, but what's going to happen if you are already under eating because you're trying to lose weight or you've been a lifelong dieter. So you've always under eight or like whatever the case is. And you are eating 1300 calories and you're not losing any weight. I mean, you have to be in a calorie deficit to lose weight. I don't care what hippie woo woo stuff people are saying. You have to be in a calorie deficit to lose weight. Facts. It's what it is. It's just, what do we do? How do we use these calorie deficits appropriately and not jack up our body? That That's the key. So if you're at 1300 calories and you're not losing any weight and you drop it to 1100, you're not losing any weight or it's going really, really slow. You're at like 0.2% or 2%. Wait, yeah, 0.2% of your body weight. And it's not of the 1%, right? So it's already going painfully slow. And then you drop your calories some more and, and you're not even losing at all anymore. Now, what are you going to do? You're going to drop them to 800? Listen, there are coaches who will tell you to do that. Um... <sighs> But when you understand metabolic adaptation and you understand the hormonal shifts that are happening, we haven't even gotten into the muscle thing yet. We'll get there in a second. It's not a good idea. It's not the smart play. So why are people doing it? Because they don't know any better is what I'm hoping or because everybody wants to hurry up and get people results. That would be the nefarious answer. Oh, I don't care what it's doing to their body. Just get them a result quickly, right? Regardless of what it's doing. Listen, if you guys keep taking food away when you're stuck in a plateau, sometimes that is the right answer. Sometimes that is the thing to do. You still are eating a ton of food. Cool. Pull calories. Not a problem. Do it the right way. Do it with the right amount of protein. Do it with the right amount of carbs. Do it with the right amount of activity and sleep and stress management and all of the things that matter. Do it the right way. Pull more. Absolutely. Let's go. But if you're getting to the point where you're not eating very much... Don't just keep pulling calories away. What we have to do, I don't care what you want to call this. If you want to call this a diet break, a diet break would technically be you just put your calories right back up to your maintenance amount and let your body chill there for a while. A reverse diet would be like you do that a little bit slower to try to like push off some of the weight regain that's happening. 
it doesn't matter how you do it. There's, there's different ways. And when I'm working with my clients, it just kind of depends on like their mindset and whatever, but here's the deal. People think of like doing this as like a waste of time. Like, well, I want to lose two pounds a week. We have that in our head, right? Like that's what we were always told. You can lose two pounds a week. No, no, you can't. First of all, you might be able to lose more than that. Second of all, you might not be big enough to lose two pounds a week. Why would it be true that my five foot tall self could lose the same amount of weight as my husband who's six one? Why would that be true? Like that doesn't even make any sort of sense, but that's what we tell people even in regular medicine. Yeah, two pounds a week. That's what you should lose. What? No, but we have it in our brain. Like every single week I should be losing weight. Here's what will happen though. You're going to hit this metabolic adaptation or you're going to hit these shifts in your hormones where it's getting very hard to adhere to it. And in either case, no matter which one is happening, it's your body telling you, whoa, 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 we have to pump the brakes. So maybe you go back to your maintenance calories. Now, if you're not counting calories and you're not counting macros and you have a hard time losing weight, sometimes we can do all of this without macro tracking just because like me and Brittany and Debbie have been doing this long enough that we can kind of like look at food logs and sort of see what's going on. And sometimes we can get away with not tracking. But by and large, if you have a super fussy metabolism and you come to us and you want help, we're going to be tracking macros. <laughs> Just is what it, this is why. We got to see what you're actually eating, not what you think you're eating. Because maybe you need more food. Maybe you need less food. Maybe we need to take a pause and put your body back on a maintenance phase. So here's what will happen. You refeed your body. Now your hormones start to get happier. Your body relaxes and she's like, oh, we're not starving. Okay, cool. Cool. Now I can relax a little bit. I can fire back up a little bit, right? And we have to do this for how long? I don't know. There are rules of thumb, but again, every single case is different. Sometimes we only need to put a pause for a minute. Sometimes it's a long time. It depends on your body and how fast you've been losing and how much metabolic adaptation you personally experience. So when you go back up to your maintenance calories, you shouldn't gain weight because it's maintenance, right? But it's not really maintenance anymore. Where you're at is now maintenance because you're not losing weight. So whatever calories you're eating and not losing weight, that's maintenance now. Maybe it's not what maintenance should be according to some online calculator, which by the way, this is why ladies, you cannot just macro track based off online calculators or the MyFitnessPal app. It doesn't work. Those calculators are guesses. You have to know what you're doing with this stuff, okay? Um, it'll The calculator, I've never, ever, ever seen the calculator just be like, boom, spot on right. <laughs> Even when I do the hand calculations for my clients, I'm looking at what do they actually eat? What is this calculation that I just did? Tell us they quote unquote should be eating. Where are we in this span of things? And we're just looking at this. Like there's a science and an art to all of this. And you're not going to figure it out with some online calculator. But to be perfectly honest, sometimes when you take one of these pauses to help your metabolism, to repair your metabolism, to boost it, whatever you want to call it, I don't care what you want to call it. I call it being like, we're in a burning phase where we're burning fat, or we're in like a maintenance phase or like a metabolic repair phase. Okay. And we cycle back and forth between these two phases. So when you do that, you might gain weight. Sometimes you actually have to regain a little bit of it in order for your body to cooperate. And ugh, who wants to hear that? But hear me out. It's not like you regain all of what you lost. That's not what happens. Think of this like investing. It takes money to make money, right? You can't get any money out of the stock market unless you put some money into it. So you lose, let's say, 25 pounds and you hit a plateau. And we're like, okay, we got to reverse diet. We got to take a diet break, we'll, whatever you want to call it, because you're not eating that much food anyways. So it's like, okay, we give back food. And let's say in that process, you regain five of the pounds. So you're down 20. You're mad because time's ticking, right? Time's ticking and I'm getting impatient and I'm getting so mad about this. I get it. I would be feeling all of those things. So I'm totally not judging you. But now your body's happy again. Maybe we had to do it for a month. Maybe we had to do it for like three months. I don't know. But whatever your body wants, that's what you have to give it. 
you cannot bend your metabolism to your will, no matter how hard you diet. You can make the scale move. Doesn't mean that you're losing a much fat. We'll get to that in a second. And you're, and you're sabotaging yourself if you do that, okay? So let's say you lose 25. We have to take a pause and you regain five. Okay, you're kind of irritated, but whatever. Now your body's happy. Boom, you can go lose another, let's say 15. Maybe it looks like things are starting to slow down. So before you even hit a plateau, you make some changes to your plan, either like your movement or you add more food or something to help your body. And maybe you only regain two this time. Maybe you don't regain any this time. Every once in a while, I have women who lose weight when we put their food back up. It happens. It doesn't make sense. It's not science. It's not supposed to happen that way, but it does frequently, um, even though it shouldn't. But anyways, let's say you regain two. Okay. So now we're down a total of, I'm bad at math. You guys figure it out. We lost 25, but we regained five. So we were down 20. Then we lost another 15. Then we regained two. You get it. Here's what's happening. Okay. If you are listening on the podcast and you are not watching me on video, I'm doing weird finger graphs thingies. I guess I should have thought this through, but basically we have a line going down, way down. And then we have a line that goes up a tiny little bit. And then it goes way down again. And then it goes up a little bit. This is what fat loss looks like that is sustainable. Fat loss that is sustainable does not go down in a straight line, literally ever, never. It's just not what happens. It is not what happens. If you get on a scale every single day and it's moving down, I can almost guarantee you're frying your metabolism and you will rebound weight gain. So this is why we have to have a long-term focus, a long-term focus where do you want to be in six months, not in six weeks? Where do you want to be in a year? Where do you want to be in two years? Where do you want to be in three years? You have to think that long term. And it's interesting how our brains work. Because when I tell people like, are you cool losing slow and steady? If it means you keep it off. Everybody's answer is, Yes, of course, I did not get myself into this situation overnight. And I know I'm not going to get it off overnight either. But then maybe we work together for like three months. Maybe we work together for six months. I don't know. Clients come and go at different rates, depending on what they need. Um, and multiple times it'll be like, oh my gosh, why did this just take so long? And, but then when they look, they're like, okay, I was actually losing weight really fast. But like, we, we want to see daily movement on our scale, Right. That's just how all of our brains work. This is why if you have a slow metabolism or you tend to rebound weight gain or you get stuck in aggressive plateaus, coaching is basically non-negotiable, but you need to pick your coach wisely. And this isn't to say that you have to do Keep It Off Academy. Absolutely not. There's a million coaches out there who understand this and who teach this and can walk you through this. Maybe I'm not your cup of tea. Maybe you're like, oh, she's so annoying. She's so extra. Well, then we can probably put you with like, Debbie or Brittany because they're really, really sweet. But maybe you don't like Brittany or Debbie either. And you're like, no, you're all annoying. I don't like any of you. Fine. Go find a coach who understands this stuff though. Not who's just like, oh, I just take people off of these food groups because women can't have that to lose weight. Or, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll kick your, we'll kick your weight loss off with an 800 calorie diet, or they're not even, they don't even do calorie counting, but it's like, well, you're going to eat every two hours and you're going to eat like two ounces of meat and only things that are green, or you're going to eat these fuelings. Here's what's going on there. You're eating eight to 1200 calories just without calorie counting and all these bad things are happening to your body. So you need somebody in your corner who understands this stuff and you have to be patient. If you already know all of the things that I'm saying, you've already studied all of this stuff. You fully understand all of the things about metabolism and you're going to do all of your numbers and everything yourself. That's fine. Still have a friend in your corner at the very least who understands the science enough to be a sounding board for you. Even when you know this stuff, having an objective person in your corner to help you with clarity is so important because weight loss is emotional, right? And we want the path to just look like the straight line down. 
that that's not how it goes when you're doing it in a way where it's going to stay off. Now, we didn't even talk about muscle yet. We sort of did with the 1% rule, but I want to circle back to that because it kind of ties all of this together, right? So remember, the point of not losing more than 1% of weight at a time, which if you have a slow metabolism, I promise you that's not even what's going to happen. It's going to be slower than that. We have to reframe. Instead of worrying about how much weight we're losing in a week, we should be worried about how much fat we're losing, okay? Because really what we want to do is change our body composition. So every single woman on this planet who has too much, quote unquote, too much adiposity, you can define that for yourself. If you have more fat on your body than what you're happy with, I can almost guarantee you also don't have enough muscle on your body. Now, you may not think that because you may be like, no, no, no. I was an athlete growing up. When I was younger and I was leaner, my thighs were so huge and it was all muscle. That might still be true for you. But if you're like in your 40s or 50s and you haven't been an athlete in a long time, even worse, if you're already approaching menopause and your estrogen is starting to drop, girl, them, them, them muscular thighs ain't under there no more, okay? Our muscle starts leaving in our late 20s if we're not working out and eating massive amounts of protein. <laughs> That's what we have to be doing. And then as we approach menopause, estrogen drops. So our muscle and our bone starts going away. Like that's what's happening. And so our muscle mass is the biggest way we can change our metabolic rate. That's that's like the way that you can change it. Um, You can move around more, all of these other things, but like how much energy your body is going to spend while you're just up doing the dishes, for instance, that's largely determined by how much muscle you have on your body. And so as we get older and we get sedentary jobs where we're just sitting around and we're not going and working out and we've been dieting, especially if we were losing weight really fast, if you've ever done a diet where you were losing weight rapidly, you lost muscle. Fact, you did. It's impossible that you didn't, especially if you were losing more than 1%. Even at a half of a percent, you guys, you're losing some muscle. It's just much less muscle. It's that the fat muscle ratio of loss is better the slower you're going. But to a certain degree, you can always be losing a little bit of muscle. But you did anything that promoted rapid weight gain, you lost muscle. Okay, so now if we want to increase our metabolism something that we can do aside from guarding against these hormonal shifts by losing slow and aside from eating more food, which is sometimes going to cause a little bit of weight gain. Okay. But the other thing that we can do is focus on putting on muscle on our body and don't worry about the scale. You can, if you are somebody who doesn't ever work out and you just eat garbage. So hi, enter Nikki Noodle. This was me. I ate nothing but trash and I did my only activity was chasing my children around, which was an activity for a while. Okay. It was, uh, and changing the remote. Like that was my activity when I was younger, maybe doing keg stands, but like by and large, I was not like somebody who was working out. That wasn't me. So if that's where you're at, you can actually put muscle on your body and lose fat. They say you can't, I, I gotta, I, I gotta just say like, we watch it happen. I like literally watch it happen with my clients. And like, I did it too. And like strength is going up. We're starting to see muscle definition. We're losing fat. All the things can be occurring at the same time. Here's what happens though. Your scale movement is slow to non-existent sometimes. And then the scale catches up though. So we go through these periods then if we're implementing exercise where we're increasing muscle, we're decreasing fat. Your metabolism likes what's happening. Your scale is not moving a whole lot, but your body's shrinking. So then do you care how fast the scale moves? The scale will always catch up. It's not like you're going to lose a hundred pounds of fat and replace all of that with muscle. And the scale is going to just like stay the exact same. No, you're going to lose weight. It's just that you can make smarter choices for your journey when you're not just focused on 
only the scale. Okay. So how fast can you lose weight? Well, it depends on how much weight you have to, to lose. It depends on where your metabolism is currently at. You may be in a period right now where you've been dieting for so long, your body's not going to lose any weight. And we have to go into this phase of slowly and strategically refeeding your body and putting muscle back on you and worry about the rest later. Like you may not have a choice for that. That is pretty rare. Okay. Yes, we've had clients in that situation. Yes, we can coach you out of that. That's pretty rare though. Even women who think that their metabolism is slow, usually within like three weeks, scales moving, or there's very clear evidence that they're losing fat. Like they are shrinking a lot. So we have some women who come in and lose 10 pounds in 13 weeks. And you might be thinking, oh my gosh, that's so slow. I'm not here for that. Well, they all end up saying though, that the 10 pounds feels like more that when they've lost 10 pounds in the past, their body didn't shrink as much as it did doing it this way. Why? Because they're keeping their muscle. (laughs) <laughs> and that they like what they're doing. They like what they're eating. They feel like they can eat this way forever. They're not getting hungry. They're not having cravings. They're not having all that diet stuff happen. Their metabolism is happy and they know what to do and they can keep going. We have some people who come in and they lose like 30 pounds and we never see any signs of metabolic adaptation of any hormonal shifts. They're gaining muscle. So Okay, they they probably never have to worry about any of the things that we just talked about. But then there's also the reality that like your first 20 pounds might be really easy, but you have a lot more to go or you want to get very lean. So here's the other caveat. It's not just how much do you have to lose and what are your genetics and what's your diet history? That's important. But really what's really important is how lean you want to get. So your last five pounds are going to be the hardest. And you guys know this. You've experienced this. The closer you get to your goal weight, the more it slows down, which makes sense because your body is smaller. You have less to lose, but the more strategic you have to get. So some women think, well, I can't lose more than this amount. My body won't go below this amount. Yes, it will. Are you willing to do what it's going to take to get you there? Are you willing to put your your weight loss on hold for a while while we repair your metabolism and get your metabolism to a point where it's ready to burn more fat. Will you do that? Even if it means your scale might go up a little bit. Usually when we're doing that, you're at least staying the same size. Okay. Once in a while, you're not. I've had one client Well, I had two clients. This is one is a lie. I've had two clients who their metabolism was so painfully slow that it required weight gain, more food and weight gain. And, and they could tell, they could physically feel it in their clothes. Like my clothes are fitting tight. This is freaking me out, but it was what it was. And it was what we had to do. And one of those clients has been such an amazing trooper. She's still going at it. She is finally losing weight. You guys, it took multiple months, but this is a woman who had been eating under a a thousand calories for multiple years. So what diet was going to do anything? Nothing. She already done all the diets. They didn't work anymore. She didn't have a choice, but to do it. Okay. Those are really, really, really extreme cases. Usually when we're like, okay, we got to get that metabolism boosted. Typically what happens is you might gain a little bit on the scale but your body stays the exact same size or it even shrinks. We just had a client who we were doing this with and she doubled the inches that she lost while we were in this like repair your metabolism phase. Even though her scale went up a couple of pounds, she lost way more inches. So what does that tell us? She put on muscle and she was losing significant amounts of fat, but her scale went up a couple of pounds. Could you be okay with that? Could you be okay losing 20 or 30 pounds at the time at a time if you have a long journey? And then we pause and you regain a little, but then your body's happy and then we go lose more. Like, could you be okay with that if you had people in your corner who know what they're doing and what they're talking about, who can help you on this process and you're not just guessing? If you're trying to get very, very lean, 
it's going to be even slower and more annoying. If you want to have like abs by the time summer gets here, by the way, it's October right now when I'm recording this. So if you're listening to this and it's been a long time in October, I'm telling you to start thinking about your summer body for the next year. If you want to be super lean, like if you're trying to look like you belong on the cover of sports illustrated, it's a very, very long process to go from a healthy body weight to extra lean. So it depends how lean do you want to go? Some women have come to me and they're like, Hey, I know that your program talks about how you help women lose 20 plus pounds. I only have five pounds to lose. Can you coach me? Yes. And it might take us, depending on how lean you already are, just as long to get five pounds off of you the right way where you don't jack up your body and your hormones and everything else as it would take to get 20 pounds off of somebody else. Here's the deal. Don't shoot the messenger, but you got to meet your body where it's at. It, It sucks. I get it. If you have a really slow metabolism, I totally feel for you. That sucks. But it is what it is. And here's the really good news. You're not powerless at all. It's all about knowing your body, knowing your mindset limitations, knowing your metabolic limitations, and playing the cards that you're dealt. But when you understand all of this, and when you can take a really long-term approach to it, you're going to get your body where you want it. And you're going to feel better and you're going to perform better. You're going to have better energy, better mental clarity, better libido, um, better control of your cravings. And guess what? The weight doesn't come back. Like why do all the hard work of losing weight? Because it doesn't matter which way you do it. It's hard work. Let's call a spade a spade. It's not easy to diet and live off 800 calories. It's not easy to be paleo and go to CrossFit six days a week. It's not easy to X, X, Y, and Z, fill in the blank, whatever thing you want to do, right? None of it's ever easy. It's more fun when you do it a sustainable way because we don't take all your things away. You get to actually enjoy your life while you lose weight. Um, I mean, unless you want to get like so lean that you're getting on a stage and then I'm not the coach for you anyways, I'll refer you to somebody who does do stage prep (laughs) because that's its whole own beast. But for the average woman who just wants to feel really good in her like jeans and in her bathing suit and have confidence and be cool with her husband, seeing her naked with the lights on, like if that's your vibe and that's what you're trying to get after, it doesn't need to be super strict. You'll lose weight more effectively. Let me rephrase that. You will lose fat more effectively if you do it in a sustainable way and you actually get to keep more things that you love, you don't have to eliminate any entire food groups. You don't have to give up your alcohol. You don't have to be hungry all the time. And here's what'll happen. The scale will move slower. You're going to still lose just as much fat because your body's only going to release so much fat at a time anyways. Even if you're making your scalp go fast, it doesn't mean that you're losing more fat. You're just losing muscle. So if we do it in a way where we can keep your muscle, which means you can keep your metabolism and you take pauses where needed, And you handle your plateaus in the right way instead of trying to bully and strong arm your metabolism, which she stops listening to as you get older, right? I always joke with my clients that women tend to get better at having boundaries with age. They tend to put their foot down more and become more assertive. And I'm like, well, so did your metabolism. She put up with your crap when you were younger. She'd put up with the low calories and this and that and the other. She just ain't having it anymore. Your metabolism's not broken. She's just demanding the respect that she deserves. (laughs) And so do you want to play nice with her? Here's the deal. You can keep trying all the gimmicks. You can keep trying all of the shortcuts. You can keep doing all of that. You're still not going to get to your goal. And if you do, you're not going to keep it. So it's not faster. People are always like, well, I don't want to lose weight that slow. And I'm like, okay, go lose it fast. And you and I can have this conversation again in six months when you've already regained it. And then that's literally what happens. And I'm not judging you if you're one of those people who I've had those conversations with numerous times before you finally go, oh my God, I can't take these diets anymore. Will you please help me? Yes, yes, I will. We have to get there on our own terms, okay? Some of us like me, slow learners. I did all those things too. 
But then once I studied all of this and learned all of this, you can't unknow it. Okay. So I'm never going to tell you guys to go do things that are going to promote really fast weight loss, even though you'll be happier with me. You'll be like, oh my God, Nikki's so smart. I went and did blah, blah, blah. And I lost so much weight so fast. You guys will just be so happy. And then when you regain it, you wouldn't even blame me. You would just blame yourself. That's a classic diet approach, right? How many programs, how many coaches, how many personal trainers, how many MLM companies that are selling shakes and potions and pills and blah, 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 and whatever. I can knock it because I was in it. I did it too. Some of it's good stuff, some of it's bad stuff, whatever. But how many different people, programs, blah, 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 have told you a way to lose weight? You did it. You thought the sun shined right out of this person's ass. And then when you put the weight back on, it never even occurred to you that the way they taught you to lose weight was damaging your body and that that's why you regained it, that you aren't actually the problem. Okay, so that works from a business standpoint. It works. I could do that. And my, my coaching business would be just fine. I'm not going to do that because I love you. <laughs> even if I don't know you, I'm not even kidding. If you're in my space in any capacity, if you read my emails, if you listen to this podcast, if you're in our Simplified Fat Loss group, if you're one of our clients, obviously you guys already know that I love you, duh. But even if you're in one of these quote unquote free spaces that we run, I love you. I pray over all of you all the time as a collective, whether you like that or not, if you don't like it, I don't care. I pray for you anyways, tough, <laughs> deal with it. It's my version of love. I'm not gonna tell you to do things that are gonna wreck your body just so you can have a quick win because quick wins don't get you anywhere. Stop gambling with your weight loss journey. Doing Octavia, doing Jenny Craig, doing some boot camp where you can only eat broccoli and chicken. That is the equivalent of doing day trading on Robinhood to save for your financial future. <laughs> it's literally what that's like. People who are smart with their money don't actually day trade, right? It's a thing. Uh, they, they play the long game. What do I need my stocks to look like when I retire? Not tomorrow. Well, where do you want your body in six months, in a year? in two years. In, do you still want to be counting calories and doing all this weird stuff when you're 80? Like, listen, even though like we use macros with some of our clients, I would say 50%, probably 50% of our clients never touch a macro. They never learn how to do macros. But even the ones who do, it's like, you can't do this forever. We're doing this as a tool because we need to correct. We need to course correct what's going on with your metabolism. This is the best most effective and fastest way to do that. So let's track and count. It is what it is. It's math, it's science, <laughs> works really, really well. However, that's also not sustainable. So then we have to transition off of that. Do you still wanna be doing all the weird things a year from now? Do you still wanna be doing all the weird things five years from now? If you have lost weight and regained it, more than once, you know what you did before didn't work. Stop believing the lie that you did something wrong. So let me get this straight. You lost 50 pounds on Optivia. I'm going to pick on them for a minute because you guys already know I hate that program. Okay. Because it's wrecking your body. That's why I'm going to call it out. You're in a huge calorie deficit, living off soy based processed foods. This is not sustainable. You're not getting enough calories. You are causing major amounts of metabolic adaptation. And then these jerks have the audacity to tell you not to work out because you're not eating enough food. You guys, why do you think that's happening? Because then your scale's gonna move faster because you're going to be doing what? Dipping into muscle and fat. So I just explained to you how precious your muscle is, especially for a woman, because it's harder for us to build it. And especially for a woman as she approaches menopause, girl, I don't care if you're 22 years old and you're listening to this podcast, you need to be prepping for menopause now. <laughs> I'm not even joking. You put as much muscle and bone density into that cute young little body of yours as you possibly can until you approach menopause, okay? Because the our muscle is gold, you guys. It is metabolic gold. 
So for a weight loss program to tell women to eat such little food that they're for sure losing muscle, and then to also say, well, you're not eating enough food to work out. So we're going to need you to stop working out so that they can make your scale move fast. That is marketing. They're using gimmicks to get your scale to move rapidly so that you'll turn around and market their program because then they're going to bully you to put your before and after pictures up and blah, 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 and all the things, okay? It is a trap that is wrecking your body. I don't even care anymore. I'm not even going to be nice about it. It is what it is. It's destroying your body. How many times are we going to do things like this? Is it faster to do that or to do fasting or to go vegan. Like, I'm not just picking on Optivia. Let, let's pick on all of it. Anything where you're going to lose weight really, really fast. But in a year's time, you will have put it back on plus more. And the real kicker is that now your body's in worse shape than it was. So the next time you go to lose weight, it's going to be harder. And every time you do it, it gets harder and harder and harder until you say things like, my metabolism is broken. It's impossible for me to lose weight. Nothing I do works anymore. That's because of all the past things. Now, there are some other people who have just really slow metabolisms for different reasons, okay? So I'm not saying like it's always self-inflicted, but sometimes it is. And so if the thing causing the problem is being too restrictive with our diets, you can't fix the problem with the thing that created the problem, Okay, so restrictive diets are causing the problem. You can't fix your metabolism with a diet. It's impossible. It is the cause. It cannot therefore also be the solution. Even if you do it and you lose weight temporarily, we get on the scale and we think, well, it works. <gasps> well, that coach told me to eat 800 calories and the scale's moving. So I know I just heard Nikki say, that that's going to be wrecking my body, but it's working. So it's fine. Is it working? We have to shift how we think of working. If the goal is just to move the scale, then that works. You can do that. You can lose it really, really fast. If the goal is to lose fat and not muscle, and if the goal is to keep off whatever you lose, so even if you're like, I don't even care how much muscle I lose. I just need to take some weight off. I get you, boo. I, I feel you. I get it. But if the goal is to keep off whatever it is that you lose, well, then you have to do it in a way where you're going to be able to keep it off, right? That's the goal, to keep it off. So really, really, really long story short, the answer to the original question, how fast can I lose weight is... It depends. I want you to go as fast as you possibly can while invoking the least amount of adaptation possible and the least amount of muscle loss possible and the least amount of hormonal flex that makes you feel really, really hungry and never food satisfied. M minimum, blah, 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 blah. minimizing all of those things while maximizing fat burning. And I want that to go at whatever pace you can possibly push it the fastest. That's what I want for you, okay? Now, what is that going to equate to on the scale? I literally have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. And nobody can predict that, by the way. If anybody is telling you, well, you'll lose this much and I promise we're not gonna wreck your metabolism and I promise it'll all be fat, not muscle. They're, they're FOS. You can't predict these things, you guys. You can't predict it. I can tell you what the averages are that I see, but here's what it depends on. Let's recap in a nutshell. How fast can you lose it? What is your metabolism like, genetically speaking? Uh, do you tend to lose weight really easily when you stick with something? So if you're somebody who's like, I lose weight really easy when I stick to it, but like, my consistency is what the problem is. I know exactly what to do and I just can't make myself do it. But I do lose weight pretty easy when I stick with something. Okay, your metabolism might be fine. So you may be one of those people who is gonna lose all the weight that they wanna lose 
without even needing a whole lot of breaks and not really having any issues. And you may never have to count anything. And we just need to work on your mindset and your habits and fueling your body in a way that your metabolism likes so that that continues and you don't wreck your metabolism. Okay. That might be the case for you. Or if you want to get like super, super lean, we might have to get things more dialed in. I don't know. But here's my question back to you. Does it matter how fast it comes off or does it matter if it stays off? Does that make sense, you guys? I I can't answer that for you. It really is personal. I get it. Sometimes it's like, no, I got to see the scale flying. But I'll tell you right now, I've worked with women who were losing two and a half pounds a week and they still quit and they weren't starving and they weren't doing anything that they didn't like. Like we literally like built it all around them. They told me they loved what they were eating. They felt really, really good. And they were losing two and a half pounds a week. And they still told me that it wasn't fast enough for them. So, and I'm not, I'm not judging those women for that. I get it. Sometimes we need quick wins and we want to see things moving rapidly. But if you can shift and realize that no amount of pressure, no diet, no supplement, no pill that your doctor gives you, nothing, there is nothing that's going to make the fat come off faster than doing things that your metabolism likes. Like losing weight sustainably doesn't mean painfully slow, you guys. It doesn't. Most women can lose weight sustainably at a pace that they feel really good. They're like, hey, cool. I'm getting some downward progress on the scale on a consistent basis. And I'm still going out and partying on the weekends and my pants fit really good. And and I'm happy. And this is fine. It doesn't usually go at a turtle pace. Now, if your body needs a pause though, where we've got to like give her a boost and that's going to make weight loss actually possible for you and pay attention to this once you hit your goal too. Once you hit your goal, you want to make sure, oh, did I slow my metabolism down? Are there any signs that my body is giving me? Like we're teaching our clients from day one how to interpret the biofeedback that they're getting from their body. Why? Is it because they're going to be experiencing any of that early? No. Like we're not putting them on anything super restrictive. They shouldn't be having huge shifts hormonally, but we do it with them every single week anyways. Because we want them to know what to look for and what needs to happen when it does occur. And so part of this is knowing the science. Part of this is knowing your body, tuning in, tapping in. What is she telling you? And then the other part is this huge mindset shift to long-term sustainable fat loss and how quick your scale will move on that process varies from person to person. But it's a whole lot more fun to do it in a sustainable way. And it's the only way, the only way to keep it off. You have to go at a sustainable pace for your body and for your metabolism if you want to keep it off. So I know that is probably not the answer that you guys like. If you're like me, I want to be told a number. (laughs) Give me a number. Can I lose one pound a week? Can I lose two pounds a week? Can I lose 10 pounds a month? Give me a number. And unfortunately, like most things with the human body, it depends. And I hate that answer and I hate giving you that answer, but that's the God honest truth. It just depends, okay? But you guys have got this. If you have any questions about this, I know that this was a little bit heavy. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts. If you have questions, holler at your girl. Let me know. Shoot me a message on Facebook. Do whatever you gotta do. And I will catch you guys next week.